Floss Tube and Instagram friends. My name's Kim and this is Floss Tube number 48 on October 13, 2022. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'm the letter K for Kim Goldman 63 on Instagram. So welcome or welcome back. I have a lot of fun stitching to share with you again today. Fun fact, October 7th, which was just this past Friday, was my two-year Flossiversary. I have had an amazing time being able to do the cross stitch show and tell and meet some wonderful people. It's new experiences, just lots of friendships. Um, so, so many wonderful experiences. And I thank you all, whether you were here from the very beginning or whether you've just recently found me. Thank you all so much. Okay. So as I said, I have an awful lot to share with you today. Um, I'm going. I, this was just last minute. I decided to pull all of the um, fall stitching that I have. It's kind of on display, and I just ran around and grabbed it. A lot of these things, I want to uh, change the finishes. I um, have made some pillows. I posted on Instagram that I have an orange coat that I have had. Oh my gosh, since the early 2000s and I needed it when I lived in Michigan, right? It's a very uh, heavy wool winter coat and I brought it with me here to Southern California when I moved here in 2006. I have not worn it a single time and yet it was like, well, I don't want to get rid of it. It's a nice coat. And of course I thought, well, can I, I should donate it and give it to someone. And I, for some reason, I just kept holding on to it thinking maybe we'll take a trip to a cold weather or something and I'll need it. And I just said, Kim, oh my gosh, this is a great backing fabric for a lot of your fall finishes. And so I decided to, um, cut it up and I posted on Instagram a picture of me sitting here in my stitchy spot getting ready to film this video in the coat that is missing the sleeves because so far that's all I've had to cut up. So anyway, that's all to say that I'm going to show you some prior finishes from uh, my fall stitching and then we're going to go on with all the rest of the stitchy goodness. So let's start with whatever I have right here on hand. I'm not going to give too much detail. You'll be familiar with most of these. Uh, Plum Street Samplers Clementine, Plum Street Samplers Olga or Olga's tart, I think this one is. Um, and these are two that I think I will take out of the frames. I just pop them in here every year and I'll probably make them into pillows with some more of the orange backing fabric. Um, I always think of this one as fall and uh, I just because it has the um, the acorn on it and I don't know the coloring, but this is another Plum Street Samplers. Sorry about that noise. Uh, a Merry Heart. Um, I think that's what this is called. This is Ale. I remember this is Ale. And let me see, I'm going to start having challenges here, setting things around me. I have to pull out the frame for this. Um, I cross-eyed collection, maybe cross-eyed cl cricket. And I have a frame for it somewhere. I just haven't found that one yet. Um, anniversaries of the heart. It's one of the blocks from there. And cinnamon stars also by Plum Street. A lot of my seasonal stitches are um, Plum Streets. Um, again, hello fall, Plum Street. This is a Chessie and Me, and I think I'm gonna make this into a pillow, again, with the backing fabric. It'll be a very large pillow. Um, I always, I tend to frame it. I do not remember what this one is called. It might be We Give Thanks. That, that might be the name of that one. And then one of my very first, uh, I did this long, long ago, and it's by Lindy Stitches, comes as two pillows, and I put them together. I thought this was really cute. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Delicious, those are the names of the two charts. And it, it comes together. Okay, and then these are some, this is the uh, coat that I was talking about. I haven't sewed the backs of any of these up yet, but here is the, the orange coat fabric. And so I made very quick pillows. I obviously I sewed them all the way around and slit the back and quickly stuffed them with filling. Oh, this is um, a Blackbird Designs from the Sisters book. And uh, at first Cox Crow, I think it is. Um, Cross-eyed collection, cross-eyed cricket, um, playing with jacks. Again, a lot of the, most of this is all 40 count and I think this is 36 count. This is the waxing moon where it comes all three. And I had debated making this into the drum, you know, uh, Nisi Lin has all those wonderful drums, but I just thought, oh my gosh, this is just way, me, way easier to just make a pillow and be done. And I took the uh, scarecrow here from um, the one I just showed you that I'm drawing a blank on right now. Cinnamon stars, I took this care and I changed a lot of things. I obviously, I made adjustments to stitch them all together. 
I did that. Um, I did this years ago as well. So I don't have a lot of details about what all I did it changed and stuff, but, um, I made a lot of changes on that one. And then the last pillow, another plum street, it's one of those series four, five, can't be, I can't be for sure on that, but these all made really easy, fast, um, finishes. I just put a little bit of interfacing on the back of the stitching and, you know, very no fuss, no muss. Didn't even worry about my quarters too much. <laughs> Sorry, Vonna. <laughs> I do get all of my, uh, finishing, um, inspiration uh, tutorials. Everything has come from pretty much, I think, Vonna Pfeiffer uh, with her, the Twisted Stitcher. And I'm sure I've watched a lot of others along the way, but that's where I, I started because I am not a seamstress by any means. As you will now tell from, let me see if I'm ready to go into my finishes. I think those are all my fall finishes. So let's go back to what we normally do. And I want to show you, um, let me check my notes here really quickly. I want to show you my inst Instagram inspiration for this video. Um, a lot of these, oops, we went upside down, flip around. A lot of these um, are things that I am stitching. So this first here is Donna's finish of uh, Mighty Acorn, which is by Blackbird Designs. And it is from the um, uh, Winds of Autumn book, yes. And I started this, my friend Darlene Dion, hey Darlene, and I started this as a sal, the BBD Mighty Acorn SAL. And so many of you um, have, this was, uh, this is Mary, sorry, Stitching Epiphanies, Mary. And, um, and then Kirsten. Now Kirsten did a fun thing where she made two squirrels at the bottom instead of what was originally, I think it's just a year or initials or something is charted there. And she did two squirrels. And I remember I shared with you that crafting Kirsty added a pumpkin instead of where one of the squirrels is. She put a pumpkin and it's also, she mentioned it was from another chart in the same book, Winds of Autumn. Um, all right. Then we have, uh, this beautiful finish of Friends of the Heart also by Mary. I, I just, I, I have this, I really need to get it back out. Uh, then I want to show you, now I have mentioned more than once, I, I hope that, you know, um, sorry for any confusion, I am not the uh, Hands Across the Sea uh, sampler or stitcher that you will hear Nicola mention. I stitch Hands Across the Sea samplers, but I am not that model stitcher that she'll refer to as the contented stitcher. Um, but Leona is a, a bona fide hats sampler stitcher. And here are some of the beautiful um, models that she has stitched for hats. That's Jane Bannister. The first one was Ann Thomas. And then we have, hmm, hold on, I'm forgetting the name of that one. And I wanted, I wanna um, share, I wanted to remember it because my friend April also, Jane Hopkins. Yay, thanks April. She posted the name right there. My friend April also has a finish of Jane Hopkins. Oh my gosh, isn't that terrific? She's got some close up pictures there, her stitching. April, your stitching is just, look at that. Oh my gosh. All right, then I was inspired to purchase this next chart that I'm going to show with you in purchases. But this is Eleanor Parr and Cookie stitched. Um, I saw, I didn't actually see Cookie first. I found her post because, um, and she's also stitching Louisa Barney. Look at this, I wanna share that too. Uh, I want, I found um, Cara or Kara, I should have clarified with you, Pink Daisy Stitch. I ran across this pink bird on her post and said, uh, how have I missed that? And so I researched it and found out that it is Eleanor Parr by um, The Scarlet Letter. And I just decided, here was another one by Leona, her recent finish. Uh, I decided I had to have it. I, I'm, I'll show you the chart. We'll talk about it later. Um, but I was just like, oh my gosh, that bird is just too pretty. Um, okay, so that is all the um, Instagram inspiration. Thank you so much to everyone for letting me share. Let me set that down and then we'll move on to my finishes. I have, I think I even lost track. I have a lot of finishes. I have like nine whips and five new starts. So we have a lot of good stitchy chit chat to talk about today. Um, let's begin. I don't know. Let's see if I pulled the book for this one. Let's start where I pulled the very first one on top. So this was another chart by uh, Mary Jane, Crafty MJC. And I don't know how to pronounce that. Is it M. Groves, 1890? And I mentioned that I was thinking I would just stitch the birds. Here she is. You can get her uh, charts on her Etsy store. And I have been falling down this perforated paper. <laughs> I've been going 
going down that rabbit hole pretty hard. And I stitched just the bottom portion, made a few adjustments because I wanted it to fit in. This is just a standard little thrifted frame, nothing um, crazy there. And I put it down a little bit, the ear, uh, a little bit lower so that it would fit nice and perfect in the frame. Um, now I'm going to talk very quickly about how I got the perforated paper to look like this because this is 18 count white. Um, and it looks like this when you buy it, 18 count white perforated paper. And this is because my friend Barbara, Nevada Stitcher, had this wonderful idea to use Distress Oxide. It's by Tim Holtz. And I got this, I just ordered it on Amazon, but you can get it at, you know, Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby. I'm sure all the craft stores have it. My, paper crafters, my friend paper crafter has been using this for years. I never had any because I haven't done paper crafting in a long time. Um, but anyway, I thought, you know what, Barbara had this idea. I'm going to give this a try. I sacrificed a makeup sponge because I was very impatient and <laughs> didn't have like a, you can use a sponge dauber. Um, look in the, uh, the paper crafting aisle if you're interested and they have the sponge daubers, uh, other little makeup sponges, anything. I just would just press this on the ink and then press it on my paper and continue to layer it and layer it and layer it until I had what I was looking for. Now, a uh, heads up that someone asked if this was permanent. And when I did a quick Google search of it, it did say that it is not permanent, that it will uh, always be reactivated with water. So I'm not worried about it. I wouldn't get my paper, perforated paper wet anyway. Um, and obviously this is not, a, it's not an heirloom piece. And, and it's, as Barbara said, if it gets a little bit grungy it's supposed to look old and antique anyway so i'm just giving you a little bit of a warning there i hope that you'll try it um but maybe for just like a smaller project i don't know if you want to try it on one of the larger samplers the bristol samplers now that is what stacy 911 stitcher she has a wonderful tutorial video out how she used tea bags to dye her perforated paper and it looks really really good too i have used coffee on my phoebe which i will share with you and we've talked about prior but um there are just other options and this one i was very excited to see that i could get a really dense grungy uh saturation of the color so maybe give it a whirl okay then since we're talking about perforated paper let's go ahead and move on to my next one here which is lydia sharp the Lydia Sharp sampler hold on here I have the <clears throat> I have the paper this comes from the sampler antique needlework quarterly magazines and this is the issue number 70 spring and this is the name Lydia Ann Sharp sampler and I have always wanted to stitch this I, I only have the black and white printout I have always wanted to stitch this but really I only wanted to stitch the flower uh my friend Celeste Celeste creates she also mentioned that this is the portion she would like to stitch I don't know that she'll do it on perforated paper but um I think this will be a future plan for her too. So 18 count, now this has not been touched at all. This is just 18 count white perforated paper. And I popped it in this clock, which I had, and I pulled out a knob that didn't come with the top piece on here. And I thought maybe I would actually add the little knob to the top at some point. We'll see, options. But that was a very easy finish and a really fun stitch. I am just enjoying the, uh, the perforated paper projects. And I have several more lined up in the future with a lot of cute little oval frames and um, just some different ideas. Ooh, out of order. But one of the things I found recently was my first uh, paperweight. They're kind of pricey. So, you know, I found this one that the vendor was having a sale and I just pried out what was in the back here. And this could be a good perforated paper um, option. Um, so I'm excited about that. Okay, uh, real quick, I'm going to show you some different finishes that I... I do not sew, as I've mentioned. Uh, I do not embroider. <laughs> I got inspiration for this from a couple of places. So my friend Cynthia Bruce, Stitching in the Light, quite a while ago now. Cynthia, if you watch this, maybe pop your episode number in the bottom as to which one you shared. She made an, a beautiful, uh, an adorable little bird. She put some embroidery on it, or cross stitch. I can't remember which one it was. And she has an authentic little uh, singer oil can and it's just so cute and I when she showed that I was like oh I have to be looking for an oil can I could not find anything that was to do with sewing this is just a regular oil can that I got at a garage sale and I popped that on there so it just felt I cut out a simple bird shape and did the hem stitch around it and then the next night I said you know what I'm gonna try I don't enjoy embroidery I don't do it and and I thought but I'm gonna google something super simple super fast 
it's very rustic. <laughs> Even my hem stitch is very rustic. It's perfectly fine by me. It's not a gift for anyone. It didn't have to be. And I, and I was just sitting there on the couch messing around. So it's, uh, it was, it was, I enjoyed doing it and having the finished product. I don't know how much more of it I will do, but, um, I like having, like I said, the finished product. So it was worth, it, uh, doing it. Okay. So there's that and that, and then now big finish. Oh, wait, one more before my big finish. Uh, so this is our, this is kind of what started, Phoebe Mead is what started me on the perforated paper. I just thought it'd be fun to try and I will show her with you later. But then my friends, um, so Celeste, April, and Merritt, you hear me mention them often. We are, all, we all stitched the same little bird, which comes from A Heart Remembers, the Blackbird Designs book this one here and it comes from a heart remembers that particular chart and we just chose the bird and said let's do i actually you know i coerced them just a little tiny bit and uh, i said let's stitch something on perforated paper we all stitched the same bird and started the hashtag perforated paper sal and i'm using that quite liberally and i'm attaching it to everything i stitch on perforated paper um and the idea is we've all finished it and we're going to now fully finish it but in secret from each other. And we're going to share our finishes. Once we're all done, we'll share our finishes, how we got creative, um, whatever we did. And so I have some ideas and we'll see how they turn out. And so stay tuned. Um, and if you're stitch stitching anything on perforated paper and you'd like to go ahead and uh, join the hashtag, I, as I said, I said I'm using it very liberally, just hashtag perforated paper S-A-L. All right, I feel like I'm talking really, really fast because I'm very excited and that's really not that unusual for me. So, okay, let's move on to my big finish. This was the uh, BBD Christmas Stocking SAL from the Home for the Holidays book, These Stockings Here, that uh, my friend Merritt Crawford, the Just Because Buzz, she asked me to join stitching these with her. And the idea was that we were gonna stitch one a month starting from January all five through to May and then um, we'd have plenty of time to fully finish them before Christmas. Well, I only decided to do three of them. And this has been, this now has a lot of fun memories for me um, because not only did my friend Merritt ask me to stitch the stockings with her, um, but they're my first stockings. And as you can tell, they're pretty rough. It's what does Annie, the proper stitcher say, right? Finished is better, done is better than perfect. Finished is better than perfect, something along those lines. Anyway, uh, my first stockings, I did go to a quilt store here and I just dropped the card because I wanted to show it to you uh, here in Temecula and I bought my first French general fabric. It's just so beautiful and I hemmed and hawed Angela at the store there helped me. She was so patient. I was just trying so hard because I made it difficult with the pink and the different colors, but I did the three of them and I finished them all except for, now you can tell my toe on this one is a little bit better, but my heel looks a little bit short. Um, they're just stitched all the way around and I didn't sew the top together yet because um, the last thing I have to do on those two is I have done it on this. Um, the other memory is that my friend Mary sent me the beads that she had left over from when she stitched them. And so I just put them on a thing and quickly tacked them on there. And I think this one, again, the toe is a little bit rough. So I don't know that I'll close them up permanently. You know, maybe at some point I'll decide I wanted, to, and I really did a very loose stitch because I knew that I potentially would have to take them apart. So it's a very long, loose stitch that just kind of, and maybe that's why it's chunky. Um, I just thought about that. That was what I did with the first one on my sewing machine. And then for the second two, I actually stitched them by hand thinking maybe I'll have a little bit more control. But I don't know that I discovered that ended up working out much better. I think it's just another one of those things where it just takes practice. You know, you have to do it a lot. And um, I'm just glad to have them done. And <clears throat> I don't know. We'll see. For now, they're done. And I'm really excited. It was, like I said, a lot of fun memories now attached to those stockings. And I, you do notice I changed them up with the, the letters to represent me and my husband and then the year we got married instead of just the alphabet. When I was deciding only to do three, <laughs> I decided to change it up a little bit. All right, let me take a peek around me and see if we're, how we're doing. Um, I think we're good with all of the prior finishes. And now we're gonna get to move on to um, my, I mean, I'm just checking really quickly. 
yes, we're gonna we're gonna move on to my whips. As I mentioned, I have quite a few. I have nine things that got progress, and we're gonna start with my Louisa Barney. So this is part of the Reflet de Soie S A L. If you put that hashtag, uh, my friend Barbara again, Nevada Stitcher, and I decided to stitch Louisa Barney together, and then we expanded it and said, hey, anyone who wants to stitch Louisa Barney or any Reflet de Soie, whether you've started it not started it, it's been languishing forever, whatever it is, pull it out, let's get some stitches on it, let's encourage each other and make some progress on our flight as well charts because they're just too pretty not to get stitched. So here we go, I'm gonna hold this all the way back here first. I did this, the big pink flower up there got added, some of the grass at the bottom, and so I, I tucked up a lot of my loose threads as much as I could, a little bit more on the house, I do believe, a little bit, I'm stitching the trees a little as I go. Um, so just a little bit, let's see if I can get in closer for you. This is 36 count, uh, vintage cedar plank, and I am using the called for DMCs on the chart. I hope this is coming out okay. So I'm scanning for you. So I didn't pull her out every morning. My plan was maybe a little bit every morning, but I just found that I'll pull her out and work on her for a few days um, and then set her aside because I do want to continue to, you know, keep moving through the rest of the things that I have to share with you. All right, let's see if we can set this safely. We'll do right here for now. Okay, so Louisa, let's see who's up next. We've got um, Sarah Barker. I think she's right over here. Now, Sarah Barker got quite a bit of attention. I got my border all the way around. I still have to do um, all the inside parts of that. And one more uh, bird, just I, there's still a bit more here and there. But if I can still stay focused on getting these border um, flowers stitched here little by little, um, she could be a finish sooner than later, let's say. Although there's a lot of flowers on that border. Um, 36 count vintage light exemplar with the called for over dyed flosses. I finally on the, the, the border here that I stitched, I finally decided, I think I went like up the outside and then up the other outside. And that ended up going a lot faster for me than trying to stitch the whole um, section one at a time. And so I was able to get all the way around. Very wonky. I don't, that's not me. <laughs> I think it's just wonky. <laughs> so Sarah Barker, ooh, love her. Uh, okay, Sarah's gonna go back over there. Then looks like we've got next on top here is my, the Scarlet House, Elizabeth Hunter. And I'm stitching her on Meadow Rue. Let me see if I can, I kind of have my charts in an order and then my stitching looks like it's in another non-order. Where are you, Sarah? I mean, uh, Elizabeth? Nope. Nope. Ah, found her. <laughs> Elizabeth Hunter. Okay. Meadow Rue that I over dyed with some writ dye, just a little bit. And I think it's the called for um, can you see that? I think it's the called for overdyes. Oh no, that's right. I told you last time that I had changed the color of the flower and the leaf on that middle flower at the bottom. But I think everything else is the... Oh, she's still pretty. Okay, let's see who's next. Oh, Margaret Croft by Needlework Press. Um... Baked Clay, I think. Here's Margaret. So Baked Clay by Fox and Rabbit. Is that right on this one? No, the other one is Baked Clay. Hmm. I've told you the first time I showed this. It might be Hog Bristle, but you know what? I, I think it's Fox and Rabbit. It's one of those. I, meant, I would have mentioned it last time more than likely. So I got the gentleman in his uh, pink coat and... I don't know, I stitched quite a bit on this from the last time. I think all I had the last time was like the house. So you uh, may be wondering, some of you, Yvette, may be wondering if I'm gonna stitch the border on this. You'll notice that I have not started the border. 
Uh, Renee will be very happy with me if I don't stitch the border. Um, I haven't decided. I think I'm gonna stitch a lot of the inside and uh, and then make my decision as to whether it's 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 a lot. <laughs> It's a lot for a person who doesn't like to stitch borders. It's a lot, but I, I don't know. It may make the piece. I may need the border and I I would, I would stitch it if I felt that it's really necessary. Um, okay. So then we're going to do my quaint rose needle arts, tweet, tweet. And I think this is 40 count tarnished silver by Lakeside Linens. Very fun, colorful, design that's just what drew me to this anything by macy I, even if i won't stitch some of her pieces because i just don't know that i would have a place for them i love them all and macy is having a sale at, right at this moment um, because she's going to be moving and she's having a sale in her etsy store on her physical hard copy charts because she's less to take with her um, this is available through her Etsy store as a PDF at this point, and then um, also through um, Evertotes. She did a collaboration with Caroline. And so you can get the Leo and Roxy, that's DMC, um, but you can get the Leo and Roxy flosses, and I'm not sure if any of the bags are still available, but and the hard chart is available through uh, Caroline as well. All right, then we've got, let's see if I can see this one before I show it to you. Um, I know it's on a... I know it's on Q-Snap. Here we go, okay. I can only get so organized this time with as much as I had surrounding me. <laughs> um, Victoria House Designs, The Keys to Happiness. And I had showed last time that I started the one lion and the key was done. And now I finished the lion and added a little bit more um, on the next lion. And I'm using, I changed everything to silks because that's just what I had in my stash. And this is some, I think it's 40 count, Vintage Autumn Gold by Lakeside Linens. And I really love how this is turning out. So I'll get the next, hopefully I'll get some progress on the other lion next time. And let's see, okay, so now we've got my perforated paper project that kind of started the whole thing. Phoebe J. Mead. And I'm using, again, just the DMCs called for. And this is the one that I did some slight coffee uh, dyeing to the white perforated, 18 count perforated paper. I added this uh, little kitty cat and a bit of the house here. Mm, finished up the flower and this flower here. I am, uh, as I mentioned, this is right to the edge, like right to the edge. So there'll be some fun figuring out how to frame. It's fine if I have to um, cover up a little bit of the, the edges. Um, I just, I got a little bit off when I was starting it and stitching on it. And so we may not be able to get the whole thing. It really isn't going to bother me. So I'm not worried about it. Um, okay, so let's see, I can set some things over there and move on to, who's next? Well, that's new star. Oh, I guess that's all the, the current pro, no, that can't be all the current projects. Hold on, are they all new now? Well, I guess they are. Okay, so we've got new starts now. No, 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 I guess I just didn't pull the book. One more. This is my uh, Blackbird Designs and it's called, it's a Huswife. It's called Hollyhocks Were Always There from the Sewing Club book. I'm sorry I didn't pull the book. And I changed the borders down here to add the scripture references. I've told you before, I, I've mentioned that I'm changing a lot of the colors to make it all more pinks. So 36 count um, dove stitch fabric. Um, I, I think this is called tan dyed effect. I keep saying I think because I, it, I really don't know for sure which one that is. And when I was at the um, fabrics, the um, quilt store, which I really wish I could, I think it's called Sew, so treasures. Oh, I'm so sorry that I can't remember. Um, I'll know next time. I picked up this backing fabric for, um, you'd think maybe I would get more, you know, I am excited to get it finished, but it's just, this is slow going for me. Little by little, little by little. Okay. So there we go. Um, and here's one more. I think I don't have my, I thought I have another, oh, here we go. 
Here's another one. It's another whip I made some progress on. It's the um, 1864 EF sampler. This is by Christy Schmitz and Vicki Danette from Needlework Press. This is again from this, uh, the sampler's Antique Needlework Quarterly magazines, or I have them all on disc. And um, I can't remember, I couldn't find the paper that told me, I've told you before, but I couldn't remember 61, I think, summer of 61, 63. If you really want to know and you, you can't find out, let me know and, I'll, and I will look for it. But this is again uh, DMC's American Chestnut for 36 count and I did the wreath. Is that in the right? Is that there? Okay. I did the wreath and a little bit of the person in the sleigh below. I really had so much fun stitching that wreath. I, I, I enjoyed it so much. I just, I know it's a lot of confetti. Um, and I don't know, oh, and I started, oh, obviously I started a little dear. I don't know that I would want to just do confetti stitching, but wow, just seeing the design come though. I get why people stitch Hades, right? Elaine, thank you. I get it. Um, uh, seeing the design come to life, getting to change the colors, getting to work with all the fun colors. I don't know. A, a little bit of block stitching, a little bit of border, a little bit of confetti, just break it all up and then it all comes out. Um, beautiful and I enjoy it. Okay, I think that those are now all of my whips. If we run across another one, <laughs> we'll find out. But now we've got new starts. So this was my, uh, again, another Victoria Rose Needle Arts. You, or, I'm sorry, Victoria House Designs. You can find her on Etsy and this is Harvest Time. I uh, mentioned that I was going to start this for my October stitching and I did. So let me show you. I'm really, uh, really enjoying stitching. I had you just a second ago. Where'd you go? Ha. Okay, harvest time. And I'm doing this as part of the hashtag pumpkin birthday SAL with Laura, who is stitching by the shore. Um, she started this because her birthday is in October. And I have uh, lots of birthdays, my mom, my son, um, my aunt, and Lily all have birthdays in October. Oh, and then a good friend of mine, Eva, they all have birthdays in October. So now obviously um, she started it in DMCs. I did not use DMC on the pumpkin. That's why I have so much variegation. I'm not sure that I wouldn't have liked the regular uh, DMC color she chose better. I think this is whiskey. And I'm really liking this pumpkin here. So maybe just sticking with the DMC, but it's all right. It's not that I don't like it. I just think I like um, her choices better. I don't think I can tell you what this fabric is. I think it was just something I had in my stash and um, ended up being the right size and the right color. So just a, a tan. <laughs> As my husband says, they're all tan. I was like, they are not all tan. A lot of them are tan. Okay, then we have a tender father. This is my first 1897 schoolhouse samplers uh, chart that I have stitched. Let me hold it back a little bit so you can see. I saw this model all stitched up at the attic when I was at summer school and fell in love just like this. She has the, I don't have the back page here um, where the original, oh, she shows the original, but, and I did not stitch this on the call for fabric. So this is the 30, no, 40 count up in the attic by Fox and Rabbit. So that other one probably was baked clay. Um, and I got a start on my house, right smack in the middle. Um, oh my gosh, so pretty. So pretty. Really, really loved stitching this. I really hope that's a good placement for you. I, I'm pretty sure it's all the called for colors that I'm using on that one I think okay let's see what else oh I've got some more fun new stars now this one I don't have a chart for because my friend Shelly it's only stitching uh, and Shelly uh, it's uh, key X stitch on Instagram bought an antique sampler and she's reproducing it she's charting it and she's going to offer it on gum nut is it gum roads gum stars you know what I'm talking about, that free site. So go check out Shelly's latest video. I'll try to link it below. And you can see the original, and then you can see the progress that she's made. Um, it's free. Uh, even if you just want to stitch this lobster, and there's a fun lion here that I've started in the middle, 
Um, she, like I said, I don't have a chart for it because it's just, she just sent me the, the PDF so I could start stitching it. Again, just a, I think maybe this is oatmeal, I think by uh, Color and Cotton. It's going to be very faded. She's going to um, stitch hers a little bit darker. It's obviously faded on the front, more colorful on the back. And I decided I wanted to do the faded colors. It's really just a work in progress. And so as I stitch, um, making color choices, and I'm not really sure how that's all, even Shelly's doing the same thing, <laughs> just making some fun color choices as she goes along. So uh, check it out if you'd like to stitch maybe any of the motifs on there, if not the entire sampler would be a lot of fun. Okay, um, so that was another new start. Now I have a couple of fun birds. This was, um, the Among the Roses by Mojo Stitches. This was one uh, that I was so excited to get for the uh, Needlework Expo releases. And I got this and a couple of other charts, new charts that I'm gonna show you from Shelly at Just Stitching in, is it Strongsville, Ohio? I love to be able to uh, support small, you know, brick and mortar stores and, and spread the wealth around. And so I ordered from Shelly. And uh, this was, a uh, wasn't sure I was going to start it right away, but Nicola at handmade, it's handmade number 12, handmade stitch, oh gosh, I wrote you down. Hold on. I, I see, I follow you and it pops up all the time, Nicola, but um, handmade, yeah, handmade at number 12. So, you know, um, she has an Etsy store. She uh, makes uh, the hand dye fabric, which I haven't tried yet. And that has to be something I do. Um, but she said she was going to start a hashtag Mojo Birds Fly Away SAL. And the idea is that you stitch either start the Among the Roses with us, or if you have not already stitched Mary Barton's work, I already have, this is the other one that you could stitch. And so this is Mary Barton's work also by Mojo Stitches. Ah, uh, you know, I fell in love with this bird when it came out. And so um, I got a small star and that's on 36 count ale. I decided, she mentioned that a lot of the colors are similar. It would look good on the same color fabric. And so I'm stitching this as well on 36 count ale. And I am using the called for flosses. And I started this just yesterday for the, in the beginning, I only had a couple of hours in the morning. I had to go, um, I got to go. I, I was um, able to spend the day with a friend and we went, like I said, you know, the antique mall and lunch and stuff. So this was just a small start in the morning before I left for the day. And then when I got home later on in the evening, I started the next one. So make sure you uh, join the sal and use the hashtag um, if you're going to stitch that. Um, okay, so then I have had this in my uh, collection, my stash, my purchases for a very long time. And you you may remember I have stitched two of the other in this series, and all I tend to do is stitch the bird and maybe a little bit of the uh, greenery um, or the flower in one of the cases around it. So I've stitched two already, and I have wanted to stitch this, but I couldn't decide if I was going to stitch the entire chart or again, just the bird and what portion I would stitch. So I have finally managed to shorten it. I'm taking out this heart and adding a leaf, just this portion here, not the house, but just the bird and um, the vines and stuff. So I finally got that figured out, cut and paste and made my decision and said, you know, I, I, I just, I wanna get a start. I just wanna get a start. Found it. <laughs> 36 count sanguine, which is the call for color actually by Weeks Dye Works. Not my most favorite fabric. Um, it's the old base, but it's all right. I think it's the old base. It's all right. It's, you know, stitches just don't lie quite as nicely on this um, linen for me. But called for flosses. And so every, and whenever you hear me mention 40 and 36, I always stitch one strand over two linen threads which was very interesting to me stitching on the perforated paper because I have been stitching on linen for quite a while and stitching on perforated paper is like stitching on Aida or Ada. And I couldn't count. <laughs> I was, I, cause I'm used to counting two, one, two, up two, over two, whatever. And I was like, I was, it's surprising to me how often I will get off when I'm stitching on the Aida than when I'm stitching on linen. So that was just, just interesting to me. And you just have to get used to, you know, get your groove. Okay. So are those all the things? I think that those are all the new starts, all my finishes. I've got purchases. 
I'm just kind of double checking. Okay, I think we're good. I've got purchases. I got my first piece of linen from Tropical Stitches, tropicalstitches.com. You can just, just Google it and it comes up. And my friend Celeste loves her fabric, linen. And when I posted that I purchased this on Instagram, a lot of people commented that they have purchased linen from her as well and they all have loved it. So again, wanting to support a small business, she's just a, a woman um, who just does the hand dyed linen on her own and Celeste loves it. And I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna give it a whirl. And it's um, it's the Zweigart base, as you can tell from the orange stripe, it's the Zweigart base fabric. It's a very lovely uh, light modeling. It's really, really beautiful. I originally, um, you know, I can't, I can't always tell. She does have a, um, a good website um, where she does a playlist and shows you all the different flosses that would work with the fabrics and such. But I wasn't sure, one of the reasons I'm telling you this story is because I was trying to find some linen, one of my new purchases, uh, also from Shelly at Just Stitching, was uh, Margaret Beatty, Beatty. And I know this is um, Eureka. It's a more of, I think this is Eureka. I know the other one I'm gonna show you is Eureka. But it's a more of a, um, Yellow, I don't think, I don't know if this one is Eureka. I'm trying to find the, the fabric that they used on this one. And the other one, it's more yellow and it was on Eureka. So I thought it doesn't have to be highly modeled because this way, I really can't find the fabric. I'm sorry, I know it's, I'm sure it's in here somewhere. Nicola is very thorough with her charts. Jersey Cream Millet. This was stitched, the model on Jersey Cream Millet by Legacy Linen. There we go. So it doesn't have um, a lot of modeling, and which really isn't necessary. So I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to use this fabric. It's beautiful and it'll definitely be good for something. If not this, I'm, I have to pull all the flosses. I'm still in the process of collecting. I'm going to be stitching this in DMCs. So I'm still in the process of doing that. Um, okay, so then another fun, right? The exclusive hats that uh, was from Kitten Stitcher. And whew, you should have, I, you, you know, I had that timer going. <laughs> I was ready to send my, my, uh, my order. Me and uh, April and I, we uh, both were on the, on the button with this one, quick as a bunny, because, oh my gosh, I just, this, I think they go really well together. Okay, so uh, the other, the last part of my Needlework Expo was my Strawberry Fair. So I got this one and the, Margaret and Amongst the Roses. Um, I, uh, Macy, Quaint Rose Needle Arts. She just put out a video yesterday and here was another one of her new releases. I had already seen it on Instagram and fell in love. And so she was on uh, her video yesterday and I watched it and said, that's it. I, that is just so cute. I don't know if I'll have to, I know Macy said it was a quick stitch, but you know, Macy is like lightning fingers. Um, I don't know if I'll have time to get this done this year or not. Uh, hopefully I'll at least get a start, but you know, I still have some other fall stitches I talked about already. My matey, now Darlene, Darlene, you know, we are not gonna finish Mighty Acorn this year. And I'm very happy that you're not gonna finish it this year because then I don't feel as much pressure. I think it's going to be an enjoyable, I will work on it through and have it done for it. Next year will be the plan, but many of you have blown us out of the water. <laughs> So this is now the one I told you was because I saw Kara, Kara, I wish I had asked you how you pronounce your name, K-A-R-A. -A. She had posted this on Instagram and that was it. I went searching and thought, you know what? I am not going to stitch this entire chart. It's gorgeous. I think Brenda Holzman, right? You mentioned that you picked this up at the attic years ago. I haven't, I'll have to see you post it. But I looked at the border and I decided that the side borders, I think they're both the same, but the side borders have four beautiful birds and that's what I'm going to stitch. It's just, and I think I can even add these corner elements with all the, that beautiful pink. So I, I couldn't pick just one because the other option is maybe stitch them four separate birds um, and you know uh, frame them all together. That is, you know, still maybe, but the way they are all so nice and tight and close together, I don't, I don't think I can do that. No, I guess I could. I'll have to be thinking about it some more, but I could, I just had to have that chart and I'm very excited about getting a start on that with all the birds. Okay. So that is all the new purchases 
pretty sure. And I have one more thing, a couple more things I want to tell you. Um, so the um, the other sal, I'm, du I'm double checking all my sals. Those are all the sals. The other sal that I'm going to participate in is because my friend Pam, who is a farm boys love on Instagram and um, here on YouTube, uh, she has a floss tube channel. She's going to start uh, November 1st. Her sal is going, and I'll, I'm going to link the, the hashtag below. So it's, it's H bd for happy birthday i guess and then f b l farm boys love and then s a l and so starting on november 1st she's going to stitch uh something related to christmas anything christmas and to celebrate her birthday so i have chosen i'm going to join in on her sale and i have chosen uh several that i want to get stitched i've loved this one for a long time this is really probably the this is the biggest these are the contenders but this has I really want to stitch. I wanted to stitch that one for a long time. Uh, my friend Celeste has gotten a start on this one, I believe, right here, and I have this as well. I would, I would love to stitch. I don't know that I'll stitch them all, but I would love to stitch any one of these. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe that one. Another one again. Oh my gosh, forever. I won't do the heart hanger. Um, I may just do um, a scene from maybe just that one. I might just do the, the one little scene here in the manger. Cute, right? Fun. Ugh. So I don't know for sure, Pam, which one I'm gonna stitch, but it's going to be one of those probably rack stack. Uh, and thanks for uh, putting out another sale for me to join and have fun and get to know you better. I do hope that you'll go check out Pam's Floss Tube. Uh, there is something that she is heavily involved with. It's a wonderful cause. It's called Love Quilts. Um, USA.com. Again, I'm going to put that below. I'll link one of Pam's videos. She talks all about it. It's where, um, you know, terminally ill children and they provide uh, quilts for them and they have themes. You could, if you want to be, if you want to stitch, you would stitch on Ada and you would stitch a block within certain parameters. They give you all that information. Pam talks about it on her video. You can either do a stitch that's, it's like superheroes or, I mean, there are a lot of different categories that you can choose from. And then the child can uh, make a choice as to who or what um, theme they would like on their quilt. If you're a quilter, you can provide services that way. Um, if you just wanna donate there, are, it, it looked like a really wonderful uh, organization to be involved with. So thank you for bringing that to my attention, Pam. Um, okay, okay, uh, last bit of fun news. I am going to the Quilters Station Retreat in April. My friend Renee said, hey, I'm going to be going to this. Is there any chance that you could go? You know, we've not met in person and how fun would that be? And I was like, oh, Renee, you know, I don't know. I, I'm, I've am i already committed to, um, I would love to do the, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, the big one in August, summer school. I want to do summer school. Of course, there's no guarantee I'll get in, but I want to do summer school. And then there's a sampler symposium in uh, January. And again, I don't know that I'll get in, but I would love to go to that one. And so those are both in Mesa, Arizona, which means we can drive, which is why they're, um, again, uh, and, and samplers, which is, you know, right up my alley. But um, I would love to do this as well because so many people will be there that I have not met, that I would love to meet. Give big hugs. You know, Marlene, I told Marlene, she by the lake, she's going. Many of you will be going the next weekend, but I will be there. Um, the, the class is what, Thursday, Friday? So I'm flying in on the Wednesday, and then I will be leaving on the Saturday. So even if I'm not gonna be in the class with you, I really hope there's an opportunity to, you know, still meet up with you. It's somehow, some way. Uh, Mendy and I are going to be uh, rooming together and just, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So uh, anyway, that's going to be in April. If you're going, leave me a message as it gets closer. Remind me because I would love to say hi. And I told my husband when I talked to him about it, I said, sweetie, you know, I was thinking about it and I, I wasn't really going to even ask him. And I was thinking about it and I said, look, here's what I've decided. Here's what I want for like every occasion that I would possibly consider getting a gift. Like it's Christmas, birthday, Mother's Day, anything I said I already told my mom I said mom can I just have cash for these occasions please because this is what I want to do I want the experience of meeting more friends and um just you know going to this oh I this is what I would like to do I and I'm really hoping to do several of these next year 
So that was wonderful news. And uh, as you can tell, I'm very excited. Okay, uh, I feel like I should check my notes again and make sure I didn't forget anything. And honestly, if I did, I think we'll just have to cover it next time because that's a lot. <laughs> We've had a lot today. Um, I just did a quick update for those of you. My husband, Alan, had his hernia repair surgery and everything went well. He's still recovering. You know, it's funny, the stamina, um, Still, there's still pain from time to time and he had to build up his stamina little by little. Um, he's got, there's another situation that has come up and we need, you know, again, we'll just be putting that into prayer. Thank you all for your prayers. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick update on that and a big thank you to everyone uh, who asked and checked up on him and just let you know he's doing all right. So, uh, okay, so that is all of the stitching. Uh, I am going to share scripture as always, and I hope that you'll stay. But if you're just here for the stitching, that is all the stitching. And so I look forward to catching up with you again in it seems to be about a couple of weeks, sometimes a little bit longer. There was a lot going on around here, obviously, with my husband and stuff. So uh, it started to get overwhelming. <laughs> and I thought, I think I'm at 34 whips right now, which it's fine. I, you know, I'm not going to put any pressure on myself about what's going to get stitched when. I don't have a rotation. That's not to say I won't develop one, but I don't have a rotation. I just stitch on whatever I feel like and whoever's calling the loudest and maybe who's closest to a finish. Sometimes that will definitely spur me on uh, to get motivated with something because I do like having my finishes as well. So everyone take care. If you want to let me know what you're stitching on or if you're enjoy if you're involved in any of these sales, if you have thoughts on what you would like to see me stitch on, no promises, <laughs> but that's, I've taken a page out of my friend Shelly's book and asking you maybe if you want to put something in the, in the comments about what you'd like to see me stitch on. Uh, it's good for me to have ideas, right? It, I have a lot to choose from now. So I'll need, I, I have my friend Shelly spin the wheel and I say, mm, oh, maybe, maybe <laughs> it's not as close as I get to any kind of uh, mm, regimented stitching uh, routine. Anyway, that's all the stitching. Love you all. Take care. I will see you soon. Okay. So for those of you who are staying with me uh, today for the scripture, I have quite a few to share with you. Uh, there, like I said, there were a couple of uh, situations that just arose with our family and, you know, some loved ones. And um, there were some comments based on the uh, post from the gratitude, uh, heart full of gratitude stitch, the cottage garden samplings. And it just, um, again, I, the Lord, I feel directed me in a different path in order to be able to share these scriptures with you. And I, there are a lot and there are more, and I will put the ones that I don't, I'll put these and then also the ones that I don't share down in the box below in case you would like to go do a, a Bible study on your own. Um, you know, get out your concordance and do a, um, pick a word, right? And do a Bible study based on that word. And this one happened to be gratitude or thanksgiving. And so it's a wonderful way to find scriptures. Now, mind you, you want to read the scriptures that come before and after because you want to read the Bible as a whole, take it all in context. You don't just pick and choose the portions that you like and then try to apply them. You, the Bible is meant to be read as a whole and get the full understanding of what is being said there. So um, let's go ahead and read our scriptures today together. So we have Colossians 2, 6 through 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. <clears throat> Colossians three fifteen, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Colossians 4, 2. Earn, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Psalm 9, 1. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. Psalm 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices and with my song, I will praise him. Psalm 95, two, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with songs. Psalm 107, one, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. 
2 Corinthians 4, 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Philippians 4, 12 through 13. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the last one, Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.